This video is brought to you by Ultium 365. In today's episode, you will learn how to use PN532 NFC RFID module with Raspberry Pi Pico. You can also use Raspberry Pi Pico W. This is going to be a beginner's level project as we will be controlling some LEDs. Once you learn how to control LEDs, then you can control almost anything. You will only need to replace these LEDs with transistors to control relays and then you can control high voltage devices or you can use MOSFETs to control high ampere DC loads. If you're just getting started with Raspberry Pi Pico or Raspberry Pi Pico W and the PN532 RFID module then I highly recommend watch my getting started videos on all these modules because you must know how to install a Raspberry Pi Pico board in the Arduino IDE and how to use different interfaces of the PN532 RFID module. You can find links to all the related videos in the description. So without any further delay, let's get started. The components and tools used in this project can be purchased from Amazon. The components purchase links are given in the description. Two LEDs are connected with GP15 and GP16 pins of the Raspberry Pi Pico. The VCC and ground pins of the PN532 RFID module are connected with the 3.3 volt and ground pins of the Raspberry Pi Pico, whereas the PN532 RFID module, SDA and SCL pins are connected with the GP4 and GP5 pins of the Raspberry Pi Pico. Make sure you activate the I2C interface by turning on this toggle switch. Watch my previous video if you want to learn how to use all these three interfaces. You can find a link in the description. Anyway, that's all about the connections. If you think you have missed something, then you can follow this circuit diagram. Double check all your connections. Anyway, it doesn't matter if you start with HSU, I2C or SPI. First, you will need to download all the required libraries. You can download this WinRAR file from my website electronicclinic.com. You can see inside this folder, we have all the required libraries. So simply copy these folders and paste it into the Arduino libraries folder. As you can see, I already have these folders. So I'm going to click on the skip these files. This is the same exact program which I used with the Arduino while explaining the I2C interface. I just copied this code from that project and pasted it over here. The only changes I made are I changed the pin numbers. As you know, pins layout on Arduino and Raspberry Pi Pico is different. Anyway, you can see this time my LEDs are connected with GP15 and GP16. These are the TAG IDs. To find the TAG IDs, simply open the serial monitor and start swiping your RFID TAGs. Copy the TAG IDs and replace my TAG IDs with yours. It's just that simple. Inside the loop function, I have defined some conditions to control the LEDs. Let me remind you one more time. Instead of using these LEDs, you can use a relay module to control the lights or an electronic door lock. So that's all about the programming. And now let's watch the Raspberry Pi Pico and PN532 NFC RFID module in action. Get your Ultium 365 workspace activated because Ultium 365 provides a useful solution in cases when you are facing difficulties with your PCB design and unsure of your next step. You can share your project in Ultium Designer or on the web with any user in just a few clicks. You will have full control over who you want to give read-only access for let's say comments and design inspections and who you want to give read-write access to allow full global collaboration by a geographically dispersed team with editing performed through Ultium Designer. Let me show you how to share your project. Simply right click on the project name and select share. Write the user's email. Select read or write permissions from the drop down menu on the right. And click on the share button. It's just that simple. 
I've added links to the Ultium Designer, Ultium 365 and Octopod, the world's fastest component search engine. Now let's get back to our project. I'm using my laptop to power up the Raspberry Pi Pico. For the initial testing it doesn't matter but in the long run it seems quite impractical to use computer or laptop. So to externally power up your Raspberry Pi Pico you will need a 5 volt adopter or you will need 3.5. 7 volt lipo or lithium ion battery packs or you can use my designed 5 volt 3 amps power supply it accepts a wide range of input voltages from 5 volts to 28 volts this means you can power up your raspberry pi pico board using a solar panel 9 volt to 28 volts adopters etc you can also use this 5 volt and 3 amps power supply for charging your cell phones and all the other 5 volt and 3.3 volt compatible controller boards like Outveno, ESP8266, STM32, ESP32 and so on. I'm going to add a link in the description if you want to make the same 5 volt and 3 amps power supply. Now let's go ahead and start the testing. Now I'm going to test it using my designed 5 volt and 3 amps power supply. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.